Good morning, beloved. Okay. <laughs> it, it, I was about to say good morning and then it said trying to reconnect. And I'm like, what? Good morning. Welcome to um, technology. It's great when it works and it's a nightmare when it doesn't. So, um, yeah, but that's neither here nor there. We are in chapter 16 and I really enjoyed the first half, well, the first third of chapter 15. Uh, we are only going to do one section today because the one section is like four pages. Uh, and then we'll finish it up. Uh, chapter 16 is nowhere near as long. It took me almost two weeks, two full weeks to get through chapter 15. It was a, it was a wild ride. It was great. Uh, and you got to hear a lot of his, uh, his own treatments. Like there were a number of meditations is what he, he said he called them. Um, and so that was really fantastic. Um, chapter 16, nowhere near as long. Uh, but this section is very long, so we're only going to do this section today. So, if, in this book, I am starting on 271, and we are in the section called Demonstrating the Law, which could be really interesting or it could be really dry. Let's find out. Although, trust me, with my commentary, it won't be dry. All right. Demonstrating the Law. The possibilities of the law are infinite and our possibilities of using it are limitless. There is such a thing as universal law and mind, and we can use it if we comply with its nature, work as it works. We may or should receive full benefit, and we will to the degree that we understand and properly use the law. Thousands are today proving this law, and in time, all will come to realize its truth. We can demonstrate at the level of our ability to know. Beyond this, we cannot go. But we will constantly expand and increase in knowledge and understanding, thereby continuously growing in our ability to make use of the law. In time, we shall be made free through it. There is a law of unfoldment in people, which says they can advance only by going from where they are to the place where they would like to be. This is not because the law is limited, but because it is law. As a person unfolds in their mentality, the law automatically reacts to them. The way to work is to begin right where we are and through constantly applying ourselves to the truth, we gradually increase in wisdom and understanding. For in this way alone will good results be obtained. It sounds to me like he's saying practice, 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 practice. And you know the old adage, a master has failed more times than an apprentice has even started. Okay, back to the reading. If day by day we have a greater understanding and a clearer concept. If daily we are realizing more of truth and applying it in our actions, then we are on the right path and eventually we, sh we shall be made free. It is a wonderful experience, experiment and a grand adventure to make conscious use of the law, to feel that we can plant an idea in mind and see it gradually take form. I love that he uses grand adventure. It's a wonderful experiment and a grand adventure. And that's what life should be, a wonderful experiment and a grand adventure. All right, back to the reading. The student should take time every day to see their life as they wish it to be, to make a mental picture of their ideal. They should pass this picture over to the law and go about their business with a calm assurance that on the inner side of life, something is taking place. There should not be any sense of hurry or worry about this, just a calm, peaceful sense of reality. Let the law work through and express itself in the experience. There should be no idea of compulsion. We do not have to make the law work. It is its nature to work. In gladness, then, we should make known our desires, and in confidence, we should wait upon the perfect law to manifest through us. 
Now, notice that he said, go about your day. It's not going to come to you sitting on your couch. You, that's why we use the, the term treat and move your feet. It's go about your daily life. And while you are going about your daily life, you are going to encounter guidance that will get you where you want to go. And it can come from the most random places. You'll have a conversation with somebody. Somebody will tell you something that you didn't know. Somebody will introduce you to somebody that will get you, you know, that's the way it is. Go So do your treatment and go about your daily life. Um, and he also said, picture in your mind. Well, you know what? If you were an artist, and I mean any kind of artist, you can do that too. You can write a treatment. You can write a song. You can write a poem. You can write a book. Uh, <laughs> you could paint a picture. Uh, that's why vision boards were such a thing, uh, where you, you, you created the picture. You created your mental idea of what you wanted. And then you let spirit to get to work on that and you went about your daily life. You know, it's not a bad idea. It's actually a really good one. And then you can adjust it, you know, as, as you see fit. All right, back to the chapter or back to the demonstrating the law. Our part is to be ready and willing to be guided into truth and liberty. If in the making of a demonstration, it becomes necessary to change our mode of living, then the law will point the way and we will follow. Our correct choice will be a part of the working of the law. All doubt and fear must go, and in their place must come faith and confidence, for we shall be led by the Spirit into all good. People often say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make a choice. We must realize that there is an intelligence within us that does know. This guidance is just as true in India, where people are Buddhists, as it is in America, where people are Christians. It was just as true 10,000 years ago before the advent of Christianity, as it will be 10,000 years hence. Oh, he's got faith. <clears throat> In so far as we are going to make this thing work, it is because we contact universal laws which run through every age and race and which answer every person. If we can see this, we shall be able to do away with a great deal of superstitious and superstition and ignorance. Let each individual immediately and directly and in their own integrity approach the law that is. There is no medium between us and the universal mind except our own thought. In such a degree as we place a medium, we have to absorb that medium before we can make a direct approach. What did he just say? Hang on. <laughs> There is no medium between us and the universal mind except our own thought. In such a degree as we place a medium, we have to absorb that medium before we can make our direct approach. Okay, uh, I'm in the middle of a chapter or in the middle of a paragraph, but I grew up Catholic. And in the Catholic Church, to get to God, you have all of the saints and you have Jesus, and you have Mary, and you go to all of them. You never go directly to God. You have all of the priests. So if you want to talk to God, you go talk to a priest, and the priest will talk to the, the saint, and the saint will talk to Mary, and then Mary will talk to Jesus. And it's like playing a game of telephone, okay? And what Ernest is saying is, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You have every right to go directly to the source of your own being. If you want to call it God, fine. But if you don't want to, you can call it whatever you want, which is why I call it the source of your own being. You have every right to go directly to that. If you're putting anything between you and God, then it's up to you to absorb that and then go directly to the source of your own being. All right, let's get back into that chapter because the sentence starts with the Bible. So I'm curious to see where he's going with this one. The Bible says there is no mediator between God and God humanity except Christ. Christ means the truth about ourselves. 
So if we have to make a choice and feel we do not know which or what to choose, we must be still in our own consciousness and know that the spirit within us knows which of these ways is right and most constructive way and will guide us. Okay. At which point he's going to point out to you that the Christ is a consciousness that is within you. It's Jesus. It, there's a reason why it's it's Jesus the Christ, because he embodied that consciousness. Okay? It wasn't his last name. All right. Back to the reading. The intelligence makes a demand upon itself. It answers its own demand out of its own nature and cannot help doing so. In philosophy, this idea is called emergent evolution. Whenever the universe makes a demand upon itself, out of that very demand is created its fulfillment. But that can only be when the demand is in the nature of the universe. Therefore, the person who believes that God is specializing for them is right. God is specializing for them through the law. Such a person will realize that when they say there is a divine intelligence that knows the right answer and accepts this statement as being true, the answer to that problem right then and there is created in mind and will be projected through their intellect whenever and wherever they are ready to receive it. It is a new creation. Okay, moving on. Sometimes artists write sentences and you're like, what? God is forever doing new things. And when we conceive new ideas, it is an act of the divine projecting itself into creation. There is no, there were no flying machines until people made them. The spirit did not have a lot of little flying machine models put away in a cosmic cupboard somewhere. But the mind that conceived the possibility of the flying machine is God. The mind we use is the mind of the universe. This is God in a person. And it is only through this mind that we understand anything. This mind in us responds to us. The flight of the alone to the alone of the one to itself is God speaking and God answering. All right. Just to put a point on that again, you know, occasionally I just write things and you're like, what? So um, the flight of the alone to the alone, the one to itself is in quotes. He's quoting somebody. I have no idea who he's quoting, but he's quoting somebody. So, you know, occasionally you're going to read things and you're going to be like, what? Ernest is probably quoting somebody. And he quotes everybody. He quotes Pi. Uh, he quotes, um, he quotes the Bible a lot. Um, and he quotes a lot of poets and, you know, philosophers. And sometimes you're just like, Ernest, cite your sources. And he's not doing it. Okay, moving on. St. Paul said, we have the mind of Christ, which means that each one of us has immediate access to the intelligence of the universe. We give intelligence outlet in two ways, by pure inspiration or intuition, or the more common way of bitter experience. And with most of us, it is through the latter. If it were not for the divine hope in us, our experiences would be more than a, the human mind could digest. What? I underlined that. The, through bitter, through inspiration or intuition or more commonly through bitter experience. It's like, I was wondering what I was thinking when I underlined that. All right. And I also underlined this next um, see, uh, sentence. So let's see what I thought here. Treatment is not for the purpose of making things happen. It is to provide within ourselves an avenue through which they may happen. I see why I underlined that. That is pretty important. It's not about making things happen. It's about providing the way through us. Because God can only do for you what God can do through you. 
All right, that's why I underlined that. All right, here's the rest of the paragraph. The moment we think we have to treat to compel something, that moment we are ex exercising a willpower, which is now up against a preposition it cannot possibly meet. Treatment is not mental coercion. It is not willpower. It is not concentration. We shall never arrive at a correct method of spiritual treatment merely by learning how to concentrate for any length of time on a particular object. That is not what we are striving to arrive at. There is a mental attention which is necessary, but neither fasting nor feasting, wailing nor praising will cause us to arrive at a place of acceptance. Treatment is not something one does to another, not something one does to an environment, nor to a situation. It is always the thing one does to themselves. Whatever method enables them to do this is a good method, a good way. Treatment is an action in thought alone. It opens up the avenues of thought, expands the consciousness, and lets reality through. And that is reality with a capital R, by the way. It clarifies the mentality, removes the obstructions of thought, and lets in the light. We already live in a perfect universe, but it needs to be mentally seen and spiritually experienced before it can be become part of our everyday life. Ooh, okay. We got a couple more paragraphs here. When we treat for right action, we should start with the supposition that right action already is. We do not create the right action. Something must come into the treatment, which is uncompromising and absolute. Troward says that we enter the absolute in such a degree as we withdraw from the relative, and that we withdraw from the relative in such a degree as we enter into the absolute. Ernest is talking in circles now. <laughs> what he meant was this, in such a degree as the answer and the result is contingent upon any existent circumstance, any existing known fact no matter how apparent, the treatment is not absolute. It is the relative and necessarily conditioned by the contingent, contingent, by the contingent which is held in the mind. So I'm going to think about that for a minute, but I think that's his point of why we do not treat conditions. We go straight to the principles. Because if we are treated in the conditions, we're staying in the relative. All right, one paragraph to go. Let's see. Let us take a concrete example. All right, thank you, Ernest. Suppose I am confronted with a problem and do not know the answer to it. Every known fact is against the working out of this problem. I say, I wish to treat the situation. I wish to handle it scientifically from the standpoint of a spiritual science. My treatment then must not consider the facts. The facts are relative. The treatment must become absolute. I wish to get over into mind as a complete acceptance, not of the old fact, but of the new one. In such a degree, as this treatment partakes of the nature of reality, is it going to have power. It can have only as much power as I embody. This is the limitation of treatment. Not limitation in principle, but in performance. The thing itself, of course, is not limited. As we have proven, that principle is not bound by precedent. We go into that realm which says, Behold, I make all things new not carrying with us the limited belief of the reason why it cannot be. Any denial we make in treatment is simply to conduct us to a place of greater affirmation. All right, <laughs> that's a lot. So 
I'm going to go away and think about that. We will finish part, uh, we will finish chapter um, 16 tomorrow. We're going to start on 275 with spiritual and mental law. And then we'll finish the chapter. Whew. Yeah. Hmm. Ernest. I may read. I loved chapter 15 simply from the standpoint of you got to hear a lot of Ernest's own meditations and treatments and what he thought represented. In this one, like he's laying the foundation. <laughs> he is laying the foundation. But and and he's not even like because he's already laid the foundation, but like he's strengthening his foundation. So all right. Um, so just a, just a little housekeeping. I'm just going to remind you, we have Creative Life Spirituals on our Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. One easy way that you can support the center and me is to go and like and share and subscribe and follow and comment, basically engage with our social media. Uh, we have, we, we try and share light, bright, uplifting, brightening, you know, helpful stuff. So we encourage you to, yeah, that's just all it costs you is a click. So uh, if you could do that, if you want information about the center, then you've got two options. Creativelife.org is the website, or you can get on the constant contact email, which you get one a week, and it's a real person doing it. So one a week, unless something unusual happens, and that is email info at creativelife.org. Okay. And the hot links in the email are hot. If it says click here now, it'll take you right to the information you want or the person that can help you get it. All right. Where am I? I am at the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a catter day. If you don't know what that is, you don't have cats. <laughs> a take a break day, a take a nap day, a get some rest day, a wrap your week up day, a do what you need to do day, a get some tasks done day, a pick that stuff up day, a cuddle your fur babies day. That's what Catter Day is about. Literally about loafing. Uh, a, um, Eat something good day, a call a friend day, drink your water day, uh, stay out of the sun day or wear sunscreen day, a take care of business day or take a break day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved expression of the divine. You are a brilliant light, a divine spark, you are spirit in motion, you are God in action, or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are a godling. All right? Think baby trees, reaching for the sun. Explore the truth of your being. That's the purpose of this. He, he called it a wonderful experience and a grand adventure. That's what life is. And if it is not for you, what are we going to do about it? All right, beloveds. Uh, Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Now, tomorrow, if you're watching this today, which is May 22nd, tomorrow is Sunday. So then we will have an amazing service for you, and you can show up in person if you're in the area, or you can watch us on Facebook Live. And then I get it up on YouTube later that evening. All right, beloveds. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved, and I will see you next time.